So this right here is my Starlink Mini, and it is a fantastic piece of technology. It essentially allows you to tap into a global network of low Earth satellites to provide truly high performance internet anywhere on the surface of the planet, even while in motion. I honestly think it's a pretty major breakthrough or at least a huge leap in technology and I'm very excited to see how it evolves in the near future. And on that point, one major change that we could be seeing in 2026 is the introduction of Amazon into this field and for the first time providing real competition to SpaceX, which up until this point essentially had a monopoly on this level of technology. For about the past year now, Amazon has been launching their own satellites and in 2026, Amazon has plans to about 10x the size of the network and officially roll out this service called Amazon Leo. And in this video, I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison of what we know so far about Amazon Leo and see how it stacks up against Starlink. So we're going to break this up into three separate parts, beginning with the hardware, the plans, and finally the network behind the service, because that's going to tell us a lot about the performance and capabilities of these two services. So when it comes to the hardware, here it's going to be an extremely competitive landscape. And I say that because we already know that Amazon is going to match the current Starlink offerings. So today, if you go to buy a Starlink dish, you have three main options. One is the portable Starlink Mini, the second is the standard residential, and a third less popular option is a high performance model. And in 2026, when Amazon launches their service, they're gonna be matching these three tiers. So we're gonna have the Leo Nano, which is the mini competitor, the Leo Pro, this is the standard residential competitor, and then finally the Leo Ultra. Now I will say there is one huge physical difference between the Amazon dishes and the Starlink dishes, and that's the, the size of the hardware. Pretty much across the board, the Amazon Leo dishes are significantly smaller than their Starlink competitors. So for instance, the Leo Nano is only 7 inches by 7 inches, while the Starlink Mini is about 12 inches by 10 inches. So you can see there's a pretty significant size difference, which holds true as you go up the models. Also, when it comes to pricing, we have indications that the Amazon Leo dishes are going to be extremely competitively priced, with some indications that the Nano could be as low as $199. And my assumption here is this is why late in 2025, Starlink introduced pretty significant price cuts on their hardware. So I think back in September of 2025, the Starlink Mini went from 500 bucks all the way down to 300 bucks, which is much more in line with the rumored price of the Amazon dishes coming out in 2026. And that's one of the great things about competition. It forces companies to innovate, produce better, smaller hardware, and be more price competitive. And if I had to guess, the next generation of Starlink hardware is probably going to be a lot smaller in size, potentially even beating out the current Amazon. Amazon dishes. Now the next portion of this comparison is with the monthly service plans. And here things are going to get pretty dynamic. If you go ahead and check the Starlink website, you're going to see two main plans for both the residential and the roam options. And it's very likely that Amazon is going to match these offerings and potentially add a third or fourth option as well to be even more competitive that then Starlink will probably copy. So again, I expect this to be extremely dynamic and ultimately very comparable and competitive between the two companies. However, one potential huge difference here is Amazon's ability to leverage existing Prime members. Memberships. Now, I do want to stress that on this point, nothing is officially confirmed, but there's an extremely high likelihood that Amazon could take their Prime memberships and add this Leo internet service to those memberships. And I got to say, if you're an existing Prime member paying, say, 15 bucks a month for free shipping, Prime video, also adding high-speed internet to that same subscription just for a few bucks more per month could be an extremely enticing deal that SpaceX really can't compete with. And the final point of comparison is the actual network of satellites behind these services. And here, SpaceX has a pretty significant advantage. So when it comes to the SpaceX network, 
It currently consists of well over 7,000 active satellites, and it continues to grow at an ever-expanding rate. And this is the main reason why the performance and the latency and the speed is so amazing on the SpaceX network. In comparison to that, the Amazon network only has about 200 satellites currently in orbit. Although do keep in mind that 2026 is going to be a massive year for Amazon, and they're currently anticipating to reach about 1,500 satellites in orbit by mid-2026. Now that still puts it far short of the capacity and capabilities of the SpaceX network, but it would represent a pretty huge improvement over the current capacity. And hopefully that gives you guys a better idea of how these two networks are going to compare when Amazon officially launches their competitor later in 2026. And after touching on the physical hardware, the monthly service plans, and the actual networks, I think the differences here are pretty obvious. Due to the pretty massive head start of SpaceX, their network for at least the next couple of years is going to be by far the more premium and capable network easily delivering the high speeds, capacity, bandwidth, latency. But the big advantage Amazon will have is the ability to bundle this in with the existing Prime memberships, potentially offering a better value. But definitely let us know your take in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.